To make this dress design, I'm going to be using the following materials and I've laid them flat here. The first material I'm going to be using in combination with the Ankara print is this blue and white pink stripe which I got when I went to Woolcrest Textile and I thought it was a beautiful contrast with the blue and yellow Ankara print. I got 2 meters of the Ankara and 3 meters of the pink stripe. I'll also be needing some interfacing just to stiffen the collar of the dress and you just need about half a meter. So I've done the pattern for this dress in a separate video and I'm going to be linking that down below for anyone that hasn't seen it yet. I also got myself a long zip that is about 20 centimeters long. I got matching white thread, one big round button, some bias tape to finish off my neckline, my scissors for cutting the fabric as well as one for cutting my notches and some pins. So I'm going to be starting out by cutting the main body of the dress and I've pinned my patterns down and I'm just going in to cut the pieces I need. So I'm cutting out the front here, going around my arm curve and going down the side using my fabric scissors. I'm also going to cut out my facing but remember when you cut your facing, remember to flip your pattern the other way so you get the right direction for your facing. So I'm also going to go in and cut my color pattern as well. I'm cutting it in this material because I thought it would be a beautiful contrast against the Ankara print. Just having this lovely blue and white pin stripe around the neck would be so cool so i'm also going to go in and cut my notches with my small scissors so i know what actually fits with what when it's time to stitch all of these pieces together i'm notching my collar pieces my dress pieces my facing back and front as well as zip allowance on the back of the dress so these are all of my pieces laid down here i have my back pieces two of them one for the left and one for the right as for my color pieces, I've already gone ahead and fused them with interfacing on the wrong side of the material. So the color is just nice, stiff and stable around the neck of the dress. So I also did the same thing with my facings because I wanted them to be able to hold the armhole a bit more firm and be solid around that armhole of the dress. So I fused both the front and the back facings. As for my bottom ruffle piece, I cut two. One is a bit longer than the other the one is 17 centimeters wide and the other one is 22 centimeters wide but they are both the same length i've also got in a cut my front piece which is just one piece there are no darts it's a very simple shape and a loose silhouette so now moving on to sewing the first thing i'm going to be starting with is my collar because that's the reason why most of you are here right so i've pinned right sides together of my collar pairs and i'm going to be sewing around the bottom curve up the center back and up the center front so when i get to a corner like this i'm going to turn the piece to the side and continue sewing around the bottom curve of this peter pan collar design and when i get to the front turn it in this direction and sew up that center front so these are my collar pieces both stitched up and I'm just going with the small scissors to cut off the corners so when I turn this inside out those corners are nice and sharp in terms of the center back and I'm cutting tiny snips here to ease off the stitch when I turn this side inside out so that rounded bits sort of folds out easier so I'm going to do this for the left and the right hand side and then go ahead and press down my collar piece so it is nice flat and beautiful and ready to stitch on on the neckline of the dress moving on to the main dress we will start out by sewing the shoulder and the side seams up just on a normal one centimeter seam allowance using a regular straight stitch and why you want to sew up the shoulders first especially is because once you sew up the shoulder, you secure the seams, you can now go ahead and fix the collar around the neckline of the dress because the shoulder connects the back to the front. So I'm just going in here to join up my side seams as well. So I just know I'm done with that part of the dress and I'm going to go back in with a zigzag stitch to secure my seam. So the seam of the dress, either being the shoulder or, or the side, does not unravel when I start to wear this dress with time. So once I'm done with that, this is what it would look like. I, I've been using this stitch a lot recently and I'm really actually liking it. I don't know if I like it more than the overlocking, but it gets the job done and that's what we're here for. So next up, I'm going to go in and join the collar to the dress along the neckline. 
this part was really like a puzzle because at first i wasn't sure which direction i wanted to put it but i ended up deciding on fixing the collar along the neckline on the wrong side of the dress so as you can see i'm pinning the center front here i'm going to connect my notches on the front neckline together connect my shoulder points so shoulder point of the collar to shoulder point of the dress pin them together up all the way to the back repeat the same for the other side and i'm going to sew with one continuous stitch from the left all the way to the right hand side or whichever direction you prefer so i'm just going in here with a normal straight stitch on your one centimeter seam allowance turning and twisting as i go along because you know necklines are not straight and you just have to be able to maneuver your seam so you're able to sew nice and neatly so once you get to the back i'm going to go in and do my reverse stitch and this is what the neckline looks like so i'm going to go in again and cut those tiny snips and i find them really useful around curved seams because when you turn this inside out the snips should give the seam a little bit of room to bend easier but to finish up that neckline i'm going to grab myself a bias tape and open it up on one side like this i'm just using a pin to hold it in place and i'm going to be stitching down along the first fold here it's about 0.5 seam allowance so that way it doesn't get all the way to the one seam that this neckline has so i'm just stitching the bias tape onto the neckline seam from the beginning all the way to the end and then i'm going to go back to the beginning and fold the bias tape over the seam and then sew it down and by doing this i'm going to be concealing the seam around the neckline and the white just looks really really beautiful against the pinstripe as well as the blue and yellow ankara print once that is all done, this is what the neckline should look like. It's not perfect 100%, but it looks presentable. It looks clean, even though it's going to be on the inside of the dress. You just want to know that your finishing looks good, both in and out of your garment. So once that is done and you're happy with whatever method you do decide to finish up your neckline, I'm going to be turning this in this direction. So towards the front of the dress where you see the collar and i'm going to be top stitching that bias tape seam allowance down so that forces the collar to stay flat on the front of the dress so i'm just doing this nice and slowly it was about 0.5 centimeter in terms of like stitch width and i'm just stitching from one side of the dress to the other side finishing off all the way to the center back where the zip would actually sit so this is what the neckline looks like I, it didn't really sit flat i wanted it to be a lot flatter a lot more sort of elegant to the neck but you can see the folding on the back came up a bit higher and i think i should have listened to one of you guys that actually done a facing but now that i know next time i'll definitely fix a facing around the neckline of a peter pan collar so this is what the finish looks like inside it's okay i'm happy with it and later on i did a top stitch just to make it stay even more flat but for now we're going to move on to sew the armhole facing so i've grabbed both sides of my facings and i've connected the shoulder and the side seams using pins putting right sides together and i'm going to be sewing up the shoulder and the side seams on a one centimeter seam allowance on my domestic machine and once i'm done doing that i have sort of like a round piece that would fit into the armhole of the dress so i'm just going in here to do a zigzag stitch along the outside side so even that part of the facing looks nice and clean so i've done this for the left and the right hand side as you can see here and these are ready to be attached onto the actual dress itself starting whichever side you prefer i'm going to grab my back and front facing stitched up together and i'm going to be pinning them along the side the shoulder as well as match up the notches so when i take this to my machine i know nothing is going to misbehave and move around so i'm just going ahead and i will add more pins and sew this all around with one continuous stitch starting from here like so and sewing on a one centimeter seam allowance using a normal straight stitch so by the time i close off this seam here I turn the facing inside of the dress the armhole of the dress would be immediately nicely done so I'm just going in here I think I'm going to do this a few times cutting tiny snips around curved seams because
because when you turn it inside out it helps the seam to relax a lot easier so i'm just going out here to push my facing inside of the dress and i'm going to be doing a top stitch that is about 0.3 centimeters wide holding the seam allowance to the facing on the inside of the dress and what that will do is to force the facing to sit inside of the dress and it won't be folding out annoyingly when you wear the dress over time the additional step i did here was i just tacked down the seam allowance of the facing to the seam allowance of the dress on the side as well as on the shoulder and that kept the facing tucked into the dress on the inside as for the collar, I went ahead and I did an additional top stitch just to keep the collar nice and flat along the neck. I did the same process I did for the facing for the left as well as for the right hand side. And the next thing we're going to be working on is fixing the zip on the center back of the dress. I've already gone ahead and I've done a zigzag stitch on the center back. So that just keeps that seam nice and secure when I wear the dress over time. So I've laid my zip down flat and I've marked where I want my zip to stop and that's sort of where I want the zip to end, that width that was at the bottom there and I want an opening at the top and then a button on the very top of the center back. So I'm just sewing from the end point of the zip to the hem of the dress and I'm going to pin my zip in place. So pinning the left side of the tape to the left side of the dress and vice versa. So once the pin just keeps the zip secure and put, I know I just need to change my footer and stitch the two sides of the zip tape to the two sides of the center back of the dress. So as you can see, the zip doesn't go all the way to the top and that is intentional because I want a tiny opening on the top of the dress so more breeze can blow me when I wear this dress during the hot summer months. So I've pinned down my zip in place. I've pinned down also the fold that that top opening would have. So I know once I'm done fixing the zip, I just have to stitch that sort of seam nice and flat on that top of the dress so I've changed to my zip footer and I'm just sewing the zip in place using a normal straight stitch on about two centimeter seam allowance remember that was how much we gave when we we're doing the pattern so I'm going to repeat the same on the left and on the right hand side to stitch my zip fully in place so the next thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to fold and sew the top opening above the zipper which is going to become a really nice sort of detail that the dress has at the back. I'm going to turn it like so and I'm going to sew upwards and this would keep that fold nice and flat. But I will also need to fix a button hoop and I've just cut a bias tape that is about 8 centimeters long. I'm going to fold that in half, tuck it underneath like this and just continue on the same stitch that I'm using to sew down the fold and catch that button hoop as well. You can make your hoop with the same material as your dress but because the button is white, I got away with using white bias tape. So I'm just going in here to decide where I want my button to sit and it has to be somewhere like this on the top of the center back. I'm just going to stitch it down in place using a needle and a thread and it just looks really nice, really clean, really good against the, the square like opening that we have on top of the zip on the center back of the dress. So once the zip is done, once you're happy with your button, it's time to move on to the next step which is to make the gathered hem flare detail that is at the bottom of the dress so i've taken the liberty to fold up the hem of both pieces just i folded it up about two centimeters so folded up one centimeter folded it up again and i just stitched that all the way across so we don't have to think about finishing the hem of the dress when we fix this in place so i'm just going in here to sew the loser stitch on the one centimeter seam allowance on the other edge of this flare piece and what we're going to do after this is we're going to pull this loose stitch to create gathers this is one of the quickest way to make gathers on the skirts trouser dress so on and so forth because once you just pull the top thread nice and easy like this it's forces the material to gather up so as you're pulling you're pushing in the gathers you're pulling you're pushing in the gathers it takes a bit of time and you don't want to break the thread because it means you have to start all over again so i'm just taking my time here 
gathering up the top piece which is in this pinstripe material and i'm going to pin it in place so i'm pinning um, the sides seams together because i had to cut two pieces to make one round piece for this top bit and i did the same for the bottom my material was not long enough to make one long strap so i had to cut two lengths join them up to make this piece that we're working with here so once that is pinned up by the size, what you would need to do is you would need to sort of rearrange the gather so it's evenly distributed along the bottom of the dress. And as you are rearranging the gathers, you're adding pins to keep it nice, secure and in place. And because you didn't sort of double tack the ending or you didn't tie the knots on the end, it would be easy to move the gathers along the bottom hem of this dress. So you just repeat the same thing with the other piece that sits at the bottom of the flare. So you have your two layers of gathered hem detail or ruffles and then with one stitch you sew them both into the hem of the dress. So I stitch it up with about 1.5 seam allowance because the gathering was just very very generous so I just needed a little bit of room to stitch my gathers in place and because I'm sewing two layers my machine was literally crying at every step of the way but we made it through we succeeded and after doing the normal stitches I'm going in here to do a zigzag stitch to secure my seam. This is a finished dress. I love how comfortable the fit is. Like you can eat as much as you want when you wear this dress because it is so loose, so free, so comfy. And because the length is on the shorter side, it doesn't sort of swallow you up when you wear it. You have the freedom to style this dress with a belt or to layer it with a long sleeve top when it gets colder. I hope you guys enjoyed watching all the same. Give this video a thumbs up if you did comment all of your ideas thoughts and suggestions down below and i will see you guys in my next one bye